All right, everybody, we're coming to you live right here at the Mecham Fountain. And I just want to take this time out to tell everybody in my Facebook family and all the supporters that have been looking at the videos. Man, I just want to come out here and tell y'all thank you so much for all of your support. I really, really, really am over, 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 I'm just full of joy and gratefulness that y'all took time out to look at these videos, man. That's a blessing. And I want to tell you personally, I really thank you so much. As I'm out here in front of the Mecham Fountain, and I'm going to give you a little history about the Mecham Fountain. Mr. John Mecham used to own the Warwick Hotel. The reason why I know this is my neighborhood back over here off of Calumet, over here by the Museum of Fine Arts. And I remember when Mr. Mecham first came out here, John Mecham Sr., used to own the Warwick Hotel right on the side of me. And he came out here and built this fountain. And right here in the middle of Maine. And I just want to say so much about Mr. John Meekham Sr. And that's what the name of this fountain is, the Meekham Fountain. And somebody that want to know about Mr. Meekham, hey man, my hat goes off to this man because I, I didn't know him personally, but I seen him on TV and I, I was alive to see this man and to see how he donated this fountain in the back of me to the city of Houston and be able to save his water bill at the Warwick Hotel because the water was coming from the air conditioned units. And just to see how good God is. i just give you a little bit of more history about Mr. John Meekham Sr. His son, John Meekham Jr. Now this is some history that you need to know and you probably didn't know. His son, John Meekham Jr was the first one to go to the NFL and get a franchise for New Orleans. That's right, the New Orleans Saints. When it originally came to be part of the NFL, John Meekham Jr. is the one who got it okayed through Pete Rosell to be able to bring National Football League to the South. And that was New Orleans. When the NFL decided to give a team in the South a NFL franchise. They did not want no discrimination of the Jim Crow law. John Meekham Jr., which is the son of Mr. John Meekham Sr., he had the money and had the influence to get Pete Rosell and the rest of the NFL owners and promised them that it would be no Jim Crow, no segregation in New Orleans. This is way before Atlanta ever even thought about a football team. And when Mr. John Meekham Jr. got Pete Rosell, because the Houston Oilers didn't even get an NFL franchise. Now the franchise in the NFL went to Dallas up in Texas. The Oilers was an AFL team. But Mr. John Meekham Jr. got Pete Rosell and them to OK and promise the people in New Orleans that they would have to stop their Jim Crow and their racist ways because if not, the NFL would snatch the team away from New Orleans. Now, when they decide to do this, Mr. John Meekham Sr., who the fountain is named after, he did not know anything about what his son was doing because Mr. John Meekham Sr. was in the hotel business like the Shelton family. He was in the hotel business. And so when they granted the NFL, granted them Mr. John Meekham Jr., the franchise in New Orleans, which became the New Orleans Saints. And they promised that they would build a Superdome just like the Astrodome, but it would be bigger than the Astrodome. It would seat more people. And New Orleans went on with it, and that's when the New Orleans Saints became an NFL franchise. And also, they had also built the new Superdome. When they first came, they were playing the Tulane Stadium a college stadium until they finished building the Superdome out in New Orleans. And when Mr. John Meekham Sr. found out what his son had really done, he went and told him and they had him on TV. And, they, and Mr. John Meekham Sr. said on national TV when his son was granted that franchise to New Orleans, how did he feel about his son being the first owner of a NFL team in the South. Mr. John Meekham Sr. told them, and it was, a, it was very hilarious 
because I, I, I remember it just as clear as day. Just like I remember them putting this fountain back here on the corner of Bissonette, right off of Herman Drive in South Main. And uh, because the street used to go straight through, but when they put the fountain, they made a circle around it. And uh, when they asked Mr. John Meekham Sr., how did he feel? Mr. John Meekham Sr. said he was upset. They asked him why was he upset because his goddamn son went and bought a goddamn football team and he ain't in the football business, he in the hotel business. That was his hotel back in the Warwick Hotel. But he said, but if that's his baby, that's his money because when I leave him, he's gonna be in charge of the estate anyway. But a little history about the NFL and the South in the NFL and later on, Atlanta Falcon built a team in New Orleans, uh, in the NFL. They joined the NFL because due to the fact the way the Saints threw away their Jim Crow law, Atlanta decided to say, if New Orleans can do it, we need a franchise here, we need to grow, and we need to be part of the NFL. So if the Saints, if New Orleans can do it here in Atlanta, we can do it. And that started the second NFL franchise in the South. Because you got to remember, they was in the Jim Crow law. In fact, in the, in, the, in the AFL, when they played the AFL championship all-star game, the players walked out the door because they had no place to lay their heads down. And because of the Jim Crow law. People pulled a gun on, on Ernie Ladd up in the French quarters. That's how much race attention they had up there in New Orleans. But Thanks to Mr. John Meekham Jr. That's why I'm doing this video, because thanks to him, hey man, they cut out that Jim Crow law. And they learned how to live with black people as far as black people being able to be on the same level with them. Not above them, but trying to be on the same level. Because if they knew if they didn't abide by those rules and regulations, the NFL was gonna snatch that franchise. And Atlanta wouldn't even think about the franchise. So. I'm here to say, I don't want to go into a bunch of history, but I'm here mainly to tell y'all, Facebook family, thank y'all so much for everything y'all do. Uh, the love that y'all give me, man, is, is way beyond expectation. Over 3,000 people looked at my video on my birthday. Man, that's the, birth, that's the best birthday present I ever had. That birthday present was so better than buying a new car on my birthday because it showed love. It showed people caring, people appreciating. And that's why I do these videos. And that's why I take time out to tell y'all thank you because you don't have to watch them videos. You do it because, hey, you enjoy watching them and y'all enjoy what I'm doing. So I just want to tell y'all thank y'all so much. I love y'all, man. 2019 has really been a heck of a year. I'd like to thank all the people over there at the James Madison uh, the Marlins man uh, and Mr. Darrell Crawford man over 2,000 views on one time. I'd like to thank Miss Tanya Lott Holen over there at the JY class in 1968, right at 5,000 views on video on Facebook. Man, that's that's a miracle. Thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Jerry Shepard, Mr. Walter Suds, Sophie Wade, Russell Richardson, Walter Richardson. All of these people, man, have helped me and support me. And I can't forget about the people on the north side. You know, Miss Alice Limbrick, Georgia Perry, Brenda Fay. Oh, man, y'all are, are wonderful, man. And I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all so much. And can't forget about my man, Victor Brown. And uh, can't forget about Ivory. Man, y'all are, are fantastic, man. What y'all do, y'all can, I can, I can only do this to show you how much appreciation I have for what y'all do for me. For how much gratitude I have for what y'all do for me. And y'all do things for me that my own family don't do. You know, I'm not finna get personal, but it is what it is. And let the chips fall where they fall. Y'all support me a hell of a lot more than my own fresh and blood family. And I just wanna tell y'all thank you. And I'm not ashamed to say it. And it is what it is. The truth is the truth. Facts and figures don't lie. Only somebody lie is people. 
And I'm, I want to say that thank y'all so much for what all y'all do for me here on Facebook and on social media. Over 400,000 people have looked at our videos, man. That's a lot of people, man. And, they, and those are 4,000 people. Oh, 400,000. That's a blessing because we are making a difference. And y'all have been with me uh, ever since I didn't have but 10,000 people. Y'all stuck by me. And I want to say thank y'all so much for everything y'all are doing for me. And I will continue to get out here and post up and videos, these videos in these neighborhoods that are so valuable to us because they are tearing up our city and they're not tearing it up to make it worse, they tearing it up to make it better. And that's a good thing about it. Life brings on a change. I'd like to thank Miss Deborah Molo. You know, these are, and, 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 and all the people that have helped me and watch these videos, man. You know, I could go on and on and on. But I just want to say right now, thank you so much for all the support that y'all have given me. I love y'all. May God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this video just as much as I enjoyed putting this video together. From Robert Bully William to you. Thank you so much, and God bless you and your family.